okay now now let's see how how we can uh, simulate this particular uh, phenomenon which i discussed in this blog so here is the cycle which i mentioned in the blog you can see here uh, frankly not a complex one just a aluminum frame with uh, two tires and uh, a well designed seat um, yeah of course in in solid earth you can actually um, Uh, do these nice visualizations, especially the one that are shown in the blog. Otherwise, uh, this is the way it looks. There is a solid component at the bottom, which is representing the ground, and uh, the bicycle is just standing on it. So this this would be the simple uh, model that you have. I have one more setup or one more configuration, which is actually of uh, uh, two bikes. You can see here. So. i'm just replicating these bikes copy pasting and aligning them uh, typically they say um, half the diameter of this by uh, cycle tire should be the ideal gap between uh, two bikes and that's what uh, i have tried to keep it is not perfect i just manually uh, just visually decided how, how how long the gap should be so this is the modeling part of it we have this this particular setup now we move into simulation or the flow simulation part uh, first of all the wizard thing which i discussed in this setup so in solid earth flow sim if you have the module of flow simulation you get this this option of wizard you can go into that typically just follow through the steps you can give a particular uh, uh, name to the study uh, you can decide uh, the units that you want to use uh this is something called as an external flow analysis so there is no closed domain it is actually an infinite domain and air is flowing in a certain direction so you can select that uh gases obviously this is atmospheric air okay uh other things remain the same apart from the uh, initial velocity or the velocity which the cycle is subjected to so we all know it is in if you observe this x y z coordinates here it is actually in the x direction and negative x direction so you can give that appropriate value here and that should simulate the wind flowing on these two bikes so pretty much that's it you can select the mesh quality here or decided obviously better the mesh uh, you can you can actually get a good good quality results so this this would be the basic setup uh, for uh, the for the for the bike uh, draft analysis or just to find the forces etc now if i to go into other things that have been set up here if you observe number 1 uh, apart from that uh, first of all let me check the initial mesh so we are actually giving uh, a wall thickness so typically in flow simulation there is an option by which we can we can specify Uh, the minimum thickness that the mesh needs to capture so that has been specified over here so that all the components of the cycle or the bicycle are captured properly there on obviously wind is simulated what remains is the moving ground so as i mentioned in the blog we have something called as real wall boundary conditions these ones what is called as wall real wall and there on we can specify the kind of motion that is either it could be a linear motion probably or it is the way it is being defined here it is more of relative motion wherein we are saying the ground is moving at a certain velocity but in fact actually the bike is moving relatively it it simulates the similar behavior and for tires even though they are physically not rotating we can say that the walls of the tire are rotating at a certain velocity to simulate that phenomenon as well so here they are one is the ground you are selecting the surface and giving a velocity of 30 miles per hour and what remains is the tires we select those tires real wall and we specify an rpm in this case we are giving an rpm of 80 for the tires uh, both the tires are hmm? appropriate directions need to be selected so this is what it is uh, we have specified or we have gone through the wizard we have specified the velocity we have specified the rotational speeds for the tires and yeah that's it now finally what remains is the goals typically or the software has its own way of converging the setup however the most important quantities which you want to ensure are captured 
uh, and you can visualize them easily it is better to set them using this goal option so that they are converged to the maximum extent so one would be the global uh, maximum velocity or i would say typically i suggest this thing for any cft software ensure that the average velocities average pressures are converged so that is what has been specified here second one is what we want is nothing but the force that is coming on the bike so here we have actually selected all the surfaces of the bike external surfaces and we are given the direction in which you want to look at the force in the global coordinate system so that particular component of force will be captured properly uh, yes this is what it is we solve it let me check the results um, it is a quite a fast uh, sorry it is not quite a fast solution it will take a bit of time uh, the ones that you are seeing on my screen uh, uh, with a coarse mesh have taken around 20 to 30 minutes to solve mm -hmm. now when the results are out we can see a few different things one of them could be a cut plot you can create a cut plot and see the velocity distributions you can see those with vectors as well so that you can see the wind directions happening the same things uh, if at all you want to follow how the mesh is created and understood those as well can be seen uh, one of the options which i have used uh, used in the soft uh, blog is this particular thing called a streamlines uh, it needs some good graphics card and using that you can actually visualize uh, the the nice streamlines that come come along this particular uh, body now uh, in terms of visualization of course you can do some surface plot see how the velocity distribution is along the parts uh, you can also have iso surface i'm not getting into all those details uh, but one interesting plot could be this one flow trajectories so you can actually visualize how the wind flows along this bike obviously the bike being very thin it is a bit hard to see see how it hits and what's happening around there but yes this is what is possible and uh, what else yeah a few more things like you can actually select which which rays you want to uh, understand or visualize so those you can see here uh, these can be animated as well these can be animated obviously for a small component and with a kind of uh, um, area that we are seeing here it may not be too much visible but it is possible to see it finally the component which we are highlighting in this blog or we are trying to look at is the surface force or uh, sorry the force that comes on the bike so we can select that particular appropriate direction through the go appropriate goal in the in the plot and say select the show, show option so you can see here it is in the tune of 2.1 lb force this is what we have mentioned in the blog so this is how it looks this is what it is all about a simple external flow analysis can help us understand uh, the force that a wind can subject on the body as well now we can of course improve the design such that such that it can withstand uh, withstand as well as uh, work with minimum amount of resistance now if i go to the second setup you can see it is it is a replica nothing else just the number of cycles is increased all other things remain the same okay all other things remain the same if i to show you one of the cut plots uh, new results need to be loaded let me load them if i show you one of the cut plot it looks something like this okay so this remains as it is obviously goal plot is what we are interested in i'll again go in for the forces in cycle 1 and cycle 2 okay so here it is uh, cycle 2 is not selected let me select that and show you so this is what you saw in the blog and and as i mentioned over there it is not only the second cyclist but even the first cyclist will experience a reduction in his efforts because uh, previ when he was going alone there was a certain amount of drag force which he had to which had to overcome however when the second cyclist comes behind him there will be a bit of turbulence and that can help in uh, that can help in um, that that is actually helping the uh, first cyclist as well on the other hand obviously the second cyclist has a very smooth run has to just follow and ensure the gap is maintained properly if the wind directions are as they have seen in our soft uh, in the way we have simulated here if it is all perfect then it can be huge difference that we are seeing here obviously wind will not be as as what we are doing in the software there could be some directional details 
as well uh, the person who is sitting on the bike his 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 own personal physique should make the difference and of course the cycle details so this is what it is a nice uh, phenomenon which can be simulated and understood using flow simulation uh, uh, external simul flow simulation sim um, analysis and we can get a good feel of of uh, of designing a bike uh, or this can be used to design nice aerodynamic bikes as well as if you are a cyclist then you can decide how you want to how how you want to make advantage of such a phenomenon and uh, and drive effortlessly to a maximum distance so this is this 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 summarizes it uh, thanks a lot hopefully it was of, uh, it was informative to you thank you